a day late and a dollar short, but it's better late than never. This is the worst! <laughs> Welcome into the Worst Fantasy Show. I am your host with the least, Jack Lucene. Uh, apologies that we are coming to you a day late, but I had some things going on last night. Uh, plus, with the another Monday night doubleheader, I would have been cutting off the, the Titans-Dolphins games, and I didn't want to take that away from you guys. <laughs> Uh, but for real, that whole game could be on the fart list, but uh, we're going to just get right into it. We are doing uh, hearts and farts today, and then we'll hit some very important waivers at the end of the show. But without further ado, let's get into the heart. So starting at the quarterback position, I mean, hey, let's just start with last night. Uh, we had all of the points in the Seahawks and Lions matchup. Uh, Gino went for 395. Uh, however, only had the one touchdown. So I, I think still left a little bit wanting. Uh, Kenneth Walker mopped up all the rest. Uh, but Jared Garf after struggling through the first three weeks uh, to the point that I traded him in a league, and I'm still okay with that trade because uh, I got Kyron Williams out of it and was able to get out of Devon A. Shane, which we can talk about later. But Goff went 18 for 18, 292 yards, two touchdowns, and even had a receiving touchdown, which is hilarious. Um, but then getting into the Sunday quarterbacks, uh, you had Jordan Love, Baker Mayfield, Justin Fields all had smash games. Jaden Daniels continues his rookie ascension, uh, Lamar Jackson smashed up on the Bills, uh, CJ Stroud had a good game, so did Joe Burrow, Sam Darnold, uh, throwing it back to Thursday, you had Dak Prescott, uh, and even my uh, streaming guy of the week, Andy Dalton, uh, was serviceable, uh, and then hilariously enough, like, uh, I know it felt really bad, but Mahomes, uh, Purdy, and even Joe Flacco, had like 17, 18 fantasy points. So the fact that Joe Flacco uh, in not even a full game of action was almost on this list, that's something to definitely keep an eye on. Getting into the running backs. This is the second week in a row now that King Henry and Saquon Barkley have saved my ass in two different leagues um, where I drafted both of them as my primary running backs. I was later in the draft uh like 111 or something like that um between 110 and 112 let's say uh so i ended up taking derrick henry and uh saquon barkley as my first two picks and that has worked out very well literally bought myself two wins uh so in the one league it's my main redraft league where if you're last place you get banished uh, $150 league, $1,000 grand prize, so a lot on the line. Uh, those were my first two picks, and literally I started 0-2, but I am now 2-2 thanks to those two guys. Um, and then in Megala Bowl, shout out to the fantasy footballers. Again, took Derrick Henry and Saquon Barkley as my first two picks, and it has literally been... Uh, bought me some grace in that league because the rest of my team has been dealing with injuries and bad play just like everybody else. Um, DeAndre Swift. DeAndre Swift came out here and played a monster reborn card on all of us because uh, this motherfucker just came in and looked like a real running back all of a sudden. Uh, finished second on the week. Jordan Mason is going to make the case uh, early for waiver pickup of the year in light of this uh, CMC injury that's been lingering. Um, so I, I think uh, Jordan Mason just continues to be a smash play and did smash again. Chase Brown kind of popped up out of nowhere for you Chase Brown truthers. Uh, Chuba Hubbard. This one felt nice because I called the Chuba Hubbard thing again. Add him in some DFS lineups. Unfortunately, some of the other plays didn't work out. Uh, some of the more obvious ones, too, like Chris Godwin and Brandon Ayuk. Uh, 
Okay. I'm I'm done chasing the Brandon Ayuk finally going to get right game. Um, but yeah, Chuba Hubbard still uh, was a great play. Alvin Kamara, Brian Robinson, Jeremy McNichols. I saw someone on Twitter mention the seven, seventh year breakout. It's what we all uh, are looking for in our fantasy streets. No. Uh, and I would not chase these points either just to say, but James Conner, Kyron Williams, uh, Jonathan Taylor. This one sucks because he got a high ankle sprain. And he was actually having a good game against uh, rough and tumble Pittsburgh Steelers defense. Justice Hill is the best receiver for the for the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, Aaron Jones, in spite of not being able to get the touchdown in Lambeau, unfortunately, uh, he did have a really good game still. Zach Moss was also relevant for fantasy. Saquon even though he only had 12 touches uh, because Nick Sirianni is just a bad coach, to be quite frank. Um, And then, again, throwing it back to the Monday night games, uh, all the running backs except Devon A. Shane pretty much were very useful. And that's rough to say. Like, even Zach Charbonnet, uh, who was more of a bust, had, like, five receptions, I think, for 30-something yards. He bailed you out a little bit compared to A-Shane, who was just irrelevant. Uh, and that's because, yeah, I, again, Tyler Huntley, I thought could be maybe a little bit of a stabilizing fourth, kind of like a Tyrod Taylor. Unfortunately, he just spent more of this game running the football than he did throwing it. And obviously that affects not just the running backs, but the wide receivers. So all the Dolphins are going to be on a different list. Uh, but for the running backs, in order, Jameer Gibbs and David Montgomery, uh, or sorry, In order, technically speaking, Kenneth Walker smashed in his return game three touchdowns. Then Jameer Gibbs had two touchdowns. Then David Montgomery had a touchdown in this game. Tony Pollard, back to relevance. Um, Will Levis seemingly has been benched, uh, thank the Lord in Christ, although it has been for Mason Rudolph. uh, So I don't know how much better that's actually going to be. But Tony Pollard had a nice game again. He had like uh, 22 carries for 88 and a tutty. And then uh, Ty J snap percentage Spears also found the end zone here. But I want to just highlight Pollard obviously led in touches, uh, but on more touches, he had four yards per carry. Uh, Ty J Spears in his work had 2.6 yards per carry. So again, Ty J snap percentage Spears uh, continues to lead the league in snap percentage that goes nowhere. Uh, For the wide receivers, Okay, let's flip it back. So DK and Tyler Lockett and JSM were all relevant in PPR leagues. The order you wanted them in was DK, JSM, and Tyler Lockett. The thing with JSM and Lockett, they're very much eating into each other's roles, whereas DK Metcalf is very much the alpha in this wide receiver room. So I love DK Metcalf. He continues to dominate. Amon Ross St. Brown continues to be one of the best wide receivers in the NFL, Jamison Williams caught the touchdown. Uh, so he was, uh, had a good fantasy game. And uh, you did not want any Titans or Dolphins wide receivers. So the rest of the list was Nico Collins continues to be a man. Uh, he is, I think, leading the NFL right now in uh, receiving yards, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Jaden Reed, this one felt good on the Sunday show. So Sunday morning, 9 a.m., I go live to answer last minute, you know, start sitting, trade questions, that kind of thing. And uh, someone asked me if they should trade away Jaden Reed. Um, And I had said, no. I mean, again, with the team construct that they had, ultimately we landed on not unless you're getting a really high quality asset. The the player I would have said yes to was David Montgomery, who was also – uh, relevant, had a good game, had a touchdown, continues to be uh, the obvious, like, you know, workhorse style running back that the Detroit Lions are going to lean on, where Jameer Gibbs is their electric uh, receiving uh, back. Um, Jaden Reed smashed. like, was, And I wasn't expecting Jordan Love, to be honest, I didn't think he was actually going to come back for the Vikings game, just – I know it's a division game, but with how rough it was a matchup, I thought they would actually sit him. And then how how quickly it got out of hand, too, I thought, well, this is not going well, obviously. And he may not even survive 
like playing the entire game, like, and they'll blame it on the injury kind of thing. But he stuck it out. He actually smashed for fantasy too. He had like four touchdowns. Uh, so as long as Jordan Love is there, Jaden Reed is a absolute like wide receiver too. Like should be locked into your lineup pretty much every week. Uh, CD Lamb, and then Dontavian Wicks. We'll talk about later. Gonna pop up on a lot of waiver shows. Uh, Jordan Addison. That's one. If he was dropped in any leagues, um, make sure that you go and just check. This is more for like shallower leagues though, like your ten man home league. Uh, most leagues that I'm in, he never made it to waivers, but just in case, like if he's there, definitely worth a pickup. Uh, Jamar Chase, Mike Evans, Xavier Worthy. We'll talk about the Rasheed Rice stuff in the in the later list because that was fucking heart wrenching, and I don't have it in me right now. It's too early in the morning. Uh, Brian Thomas Jr. though, to <laughs> let's spend some positivity. Brian Thomas Jr. was very much a my guy going into the season. I had him ranked as the third uh, rookie wide receiver pre-draft ahead of Roman Dunes. Uh, I only had him behind MHJ and Neighbors. I loved him uh, coming out of college. His whole uh, profile, I thought the landing spot with the Jaguars was great. I thought it could be better than this even. Um, like yesterday, as great as a, a game as it was, I felt like the true breakout is still coming. Like the true monster game for Brian Thomas Jr. And the tr like the actual monster breakout is still on its way. And it feels like if Trevor Lawrence can fix his shit and maybe unlock part of this, like some of this offense, like Brian Thomas Jr. I still feel the 150 two, two tutty game coming. Uh, Xavier Leggett is going to be, again, another hot name on waivers. Uh, Malik Neighbors, uh, keep an eye on him. I think he was injured in that Thursday game, uh, but he should have a long enough time to recover. Uh, Deontay Johnson, Justin Jefferson, kind of a lower game for Jefferson, but he had that one touchdown that was just ridiculous. Like, the dude was literally draped all over him, almost looked like P.I., and Jefferson just kind of, like, looks back, catches it in his chest with one hand, and just, boom, tutty. Um, Stefan Diggs, Stefan Diggs, guys. I told you about Stefan Diggs. I told you that he was going to be relevant for this first year in Houston. Um, he's trying to get the contract, like, he's essentially on a one year deal, and he will either, you know, go somewhere else next year and I'll buy into him for one more year, or if he stays with Houston, I'm kind of that's where I'm kind of out is on next year. But I'm telling you guys, Stephon Diggs, he's very relevant in this office. CJ Shroud doesn't run. And especially when they're down uh, Joe Mixon, like Stephon Diggs is very much the second look right now. It's Nico Collins and then Stephon Diggs. Um, and Nico is more of a downfield uh, presence. So Stephon Diggs is like really working a lot of those underneath routes and in the in inside and out of the slot, uh, which is kind of what I expected. And, I really felt that could potentially impact Tank Dell. And so that receiving room has really played out kind of exactly how I expected this year. Uh, but Stephon Diggs, uh, hilariously enough, did get the touchdown on the on a rushing play. But the, again, the fact it was like a design gadget play where Diggs is the one that ends up with the ball in his hands, either deciding to, he's supposed to throw a pass there, I think, to Stroud or something like that. Uh, but he saw that, oh, no, this is kind of breaking down and I have an open lane right here. I'm just going to run this in. And just, again, the fact that they have a design gadget play where Stephon Diggs is the one that ends up with the ball in his hands making that decision tells you what you need to know about how they value him in, the, in this offense. Uh, Christian Kirk uh, had a good day, could have had a better one. Literally, Trevor Lawrence just missed him on a, on a bomb touchdown. Oh my God, talking about just missing a bomb touchdown. I'm, I'm like shook with just saying the fucking words. Um, <laughs> poor Amari Cooper. We'll talk about that after. Um, Michael Pittman, this was his first real relevant game of the year, and he is going to be, oh man, Michael Pittman season is about to hit because Joe Flacco is coming in. Um, uh, and then you had... Sorry, Lad McConkey. My guy Lad McConkey popping up with his best game of the year. Five, it was like five for 60 in a tutty, but still. Uh, and then just guys who really helped you too, Terry McLaurin, uh, and then Rashid Shahid kind of in a PPR format. And Cortland Sutton. 
uh, I just want to shout out Cartland Sutton because that dude is just like a veteran wide receiver. He just doesn't complain. He just he you know he reminds me of a lot is um, kind of Anquan Bolden esque, uh, just getting it done with whoever's there. And honestly, he's having a decent fantasy season. He's kind of a he's a a Robitussin player very much so in the sense of like I wouldn't. I would be okay trading for him. Now, the way that I would do it is I would frame it as he is someone that I'm having to take on. Uh, but it's like, I'm actually okay with that, if that makes sense. So it's like, if I, just to give you an example, let's say I'm targeting running backs. Okay. Let's say there's a team that has a running back that I like, and they also happen to have Cortland Sutton. Okay. I'm going to now take my lesser running back that I wanted to send for that better running back. But then where I'm going to look is like, okay, maybe I have a wide receiver that is not necessarily better than Cortland Sutton, but perceived as, you know, maybe someone, a perfect example in my mind would be Jamison Williams. I think Jamison Williams is hot tits right now. And he is great when he booms. Obviously he still busts. Sometimes he's still more of an inconsistent presence, especially I think as Laporta gets healthier, but I could see a trade where it's like, yeah, Jamison Williams and X running back that you're trying to get rid of Devon a Shane. Perfect example. So yeah, here I, I just kind of did something uh, similar, but it was different players, but uh, let's just say, off the back of this game, it's going to be even harder, though, because Asian, like the whole Dolphins offense looks like trash without Tua. Um, and it was a primetime game. But just for the sake of argument, let's say you were sending um, Jamison Williams and Devon Ashane for Cortland Sutton and Kyron Williams. Even though... Like the two players that I mentioned, you know, Jamison being more inconsistent and Devon obviously struggling with the quarterback issues. Like those are much sexier fantasy names than Kyron Williams and Carlton Sutton. Even after last night's game, I could see a world where that person accepts that trade. And at the end of the year, I feel like Kyron Williams and Carlton Sutton are going to have scored more fantasy points and have been more relevant for more weeks for your fantasy team. And that's what I mean by Robitussin players. They're not sexy but they're essential. They're good for you. They're healthy. They're healthy producers for your team. Um, the tight ends, we got, uh, this was just, I can't believe that this shit is still happening with tight ends. Um, Taysom Hill, Pat Firemuth, Tucker Craft, George Kittle, and Travis Kelsey, Dallas Goddard. Those were like your actually relevant tight ends. And then popping up in the tight, uh, top 10 hilariously, you had names like Blake Whitehart, Austin Hooper, Kate Otten, Josh Oliver, uh, and then throwback to Fergulicious uh, on uh, Thursday had seven receptions. Jake Ferguson, um, man, tight ends are just fucking abysmal this year. Elite tight end is dead as it ever has been. Oh, good Lord. All right. Um, and then on defense, before we get into the farts, defense, the top defenses this week, 49ers. Falcons, Broncos, the Broncos defense might be for real, guys. Um, they might be one to avoid and also one to stream. Uh, the Bucks, the Browns, and the Ravens also, those defenses were good plays. All right, we'll get into the farts. Come on, don't bullshit me. Bullshit. Bullshit. <laughs> bullshit. 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 You sell So bullshit. Shout out to my guy, uh, who we were talking a little bit on Twitter, and I was saying, I think there's something this year that doesn't quite feel right, where I'm just not having as much fun with fantasy football and football in general as I used to. And yeah, someone said, I think with all the injuries and the bad ref play and the low scoring, it's just all kind of combining into this muck. And it feels like we're still kind of marred in preseason football. I think, you know, Seahawks Lions, that was like the first real juice uh, game that we've gotten for fantasy in a minute. So uh, I think we need more of that in our lives uh, and less of these fart quarterbacks like 
Caleb Williams and Bo Nix and Kyler Murray. That's the most surprising one to me on this list. Had an amazing matchup seemingly against the Commanders who are suddenly hitting their stride on in all facets of the game uh, under uh, Dan Quinn there. So uh, that's one to keep an eye on. Aaron Rodgers, Kirk Cousins, Derek Carr. Derek Carr turning back into a pumpkin. Uh, Josh Allen. This one, uh, just when I... But that's when I'm like, yeah, I'm going to hold my L and I'm giving Josh Allen and this offense credit. Again, just right back into this is kind of the myopic offense that I was expecting to see a little bit more of, quite frankly, this year. Uh, but, it, you know, the Ravens just pounded on them and the Ravens uh, seem to be the best team in the AFC right now. Uh, Anthony Richardson got injured again, again. What I told... This is the whole thing that I lamented with Anthony Richardson is I don't care how much you think you're Superman. You can't just run face first into grown-ass linebackers and expect to live through the entire season. Uh, Gardner Minshew, uh, Matt Stafford, uh, probably still being uh, used in a lot of super flex lineups, and Will Levis with cry face uh, got benched for Mason Rudolph. So if you played him, unfortunately, didn't work out for you. Um for running max, Najee Harris. This one I predicted. I said the guy had his arm in a sling. Uh, I didn't think the matchup uh, was that great, to be honest, against the Colts. Uh, I thought that was kind of uh, being overlooked a little bit. So I had him as a bench uh, if you were able to do that. So hopefully you did. If not, he did save you with a little bit of gross PPR work at least. Uh, Roshan Johnson's extended look amounted to like 20 yards. Uh, J.K. Dobbins just ran into a really tough Kansas City Chiefs defense. He's still uh, clearly the one there. Uh, Cordell Patterson, if you had to go for a deep flex play, um, he hurt his ankle. He was actually having a decent game. Uh, so something I'm going to be keeping an eye out for, uh, honestly, for the Steelers, because now we've got Jalen Warren is hurt. Cordell Patterson's hurt. Najee's still dealing with his own injury, which I think is what slowed him up in the last game. Uh I, I think keep an eye on if the Steelers sign any running backs off the streets or if they make a, a trade for a running back. That's someone that I might be targeting. Um, Samaje Piran and Carson Steele have been rendered irrelevant by Kareem Hunt, hilariously enough, who has come back to this team. Uh, Travis Etienne apparently had a shoulder injury and none of us knew about it. And he kind of played, but not really. Uh, in he still, like, was okay for – I mean, for having played injured, I think he had, like, 11 for 50. Uh, so I, it's so weird how the what the hell the Jaguars are doing. And uh, Doug Peterson coming to the podium at 0-4 being like, well, that's a strange question when they're asking him uh, if he thinks his job is uh, uh, being – or if his job is potentially, like um, – what's the word I'm looking for? Uh uh, it's too fucking early in the morning. Anyways, um, yeah, that just he's gonna get fired, and he's like, "Oh, that's a weird question." Oh, fuck you. Uh, Ramondre Stevenson struggled. James Cook, Cam Akers, Brees Hall. Jesus Christ, what a fucking terrible game for Brees Hall. Uh, and he hasn't looked that great all year. People have been shitting on Bijan Robinson, who's frankly had a tougher schedule, uh, and you know in terms of just getting like touchdowns and I think like the receiving work Brees Hall has maybe outpaced Bijan a little bit because uh, it feels like they're more forcibly trying to work him in. I'm not sure what the hell is going on with this Falcons offense too. Uh, I dropped a meme of like, you guys were supposed to destroy the Smith, not join them. Like what the fuck is happening in Atlanta? Uh, Bijan still though, I feel like, They've had their toughest part of the schedule, Atlanta did, um, and they it will loosen up, and Bijan should be fine for the rest of the season. Whereas Brees Hall, I still believe in Brees Hall. I'm not jumping off the ship here, but it's making me a little bit nervous, mostly because of this coaching staff and how they're utilizing him, and this offensive line isn't coming together the way that they were hoping. And It just seems like it, everything looks hard for the Jets right now. Like, even Aaron Rodgers, um, you know, like, him to Garrett Wilson has looked not – again, P 
people acted like Aaron Rodgers was just going to come in and be the Aaron Rodgers of old and turn Garrett Wilson into a, a, a mo- like a modern day version of young Devonte Adams. And I just, I don't even know if Aaron Rodgers is even that much better than Brock Purdy at this stage of their career, to be quite frank. Like, there's good things that Aaron Rodgers does, but physically, I think uh, he definitely looked like he's struggling a little bit. But if he can just make it healthy through the season, I think that's an assessment to who Aaron Rodgers is as a player and, and has been throughout his career. But I don't know that that really helps the Jets' like offense become super fantasy relevant. They might win some games because their defense is so good, but yeah, I'm kind of just, uh, I think I'm going to really be tempering my expectations for the Jets going forward. Uh, and then Devin Singletary also struggled on Thursday. Um, that was a weird one. He should be fine still. Zeke uh, is dead to me. Zamir White is even more dead to me. <laughs> He's getting outpaced by Alexander Madison. Like He is the new Alexander Madison, hilariously enough, and he's being – outpaced by alexander madison so like the the irony is thick in las vegas um gus bus also pretty much irrelevant right now as long as jk dobbins is getting the majority of the work uh and then i mentioned it a little bit but devon a shane i traded him away and this was exactly what i was afraid of is that without solid quarterback play even ty huntley who i like uh, and yet, hilariously enough, has been a Pro Bowl quarterback before. Um, he's not, he's Tyrod Taylor light. Like, he's not going to support multiple receiving options. I was hoping he could support just Tyreek, and even that didn't really come through. Uh, so I was pretty much out on A Shane for now until this offense kind of figures things out basically once Tua comes back, assuming that he does come back this year. Uh, but otherwise, like, they just look. Uh, terrible. I mean, uh, again, it's crazy how these NFL franchises can't figure out how to have like a solid backup quarterback, you know, like a uh, Joe Flacco, a Jameis Winston, or at least someone who can like steady the ship uh, for you. Like, J- again, Jameis Winston's just floating out there in Cleveland, not doing anything. And it feels like he's starting to piss off enough people in, in Cleveland in terms of. Like, the people love him. The locker room loves him. I'm talking about the coaches and the GMs, I think, are maybe already getting a little bit sick of Jameis. Uh, so I could see him 100% being a trade target. Um, but, yeah, let's get into the wide receivers here. Jacoby Myers, Darnell Mooney, Brandon Ayuk. Those guys were, like, serviceable, but it was gross. Amari Cooper, this one, fucking – this was the one. This was the one where honestly I just was like, I don't, I don't even know if I want to keep watching right now. Um, Amari Cooper had an 82 yard tutty to the house, smash play against his old team, against the Raiders, the team that drafted him, and gets called back on the most bullshit holding call. And I thought, was this not a thing? that they changed. Am I crazy? Did I forget this or did they get rid of this? Well, we need to bring this shit back of reviewing bad ref calls. I'm so sick of this shit. And so is everybody else. Uh, there needs to be some kind of accountability and it doesn't need to take fucking 10, 20 minutes. Like it should be obvious for them to just throw it back to New York and be like, yeah, was that was that a good play or was that a good call or no pick up the flag like all, that's all it takes it's so simple and yet they make it so hard i fucking this is like it's frustrating because this is a a thing that i see in all walks of life and business is just um human beings galaxy braining something that is supposed to be simple and so that you make something simple incredibly difficult and you're like oh but it's so difficult it's like it's not though you're making it difficult you are adding all these extra steps that don't need to happen when you could just fucking simplify this shit <laughs> like oh and again it's it's like there's a thousand cameras watching the game, basically. Not 
I'm being egregious and hyperbolic for a reason, but like there's bro, there's a camera here, there's a camera there, there's a camera there, there's 50 refs, there's thousands of people in the fans, there's millions watching at home, and we can all see the same shit. And somehow these refs are like, do, 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 do. yo, I'm so sick of this shit, man. And fucking, and it's not even about fancy. It's about how it affected the outcome of the game. The the Browns were completely deflated after that. Amari Cooper was completely deflated after that. Why wouldn't he be a fucking eighty yard tutty to the house? Imagine you as a player in in the NFL catch an eighty fucking yard tutty. You look back and the fucking refs pull it off the board with laundry, and then you see the 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 call and it wasn't even fucking a hold. Ah. Oh, my God. I would lose my fucking mind. Uh, Garrett Wilson, we already talked about, like, the. it just looks hard with Aaron Rodgers right now. Uh, Keenan Allen, I didn't expect to be fully back from the heel, and he only got targeted three times. I'm assuming that would be why. Andre Yoshivas, uh, this just wasn't a Yoshi game. Uh, Michael Wilson, I thought could see more work. Same with the Dorch. Uh, but Arizona just kind of got put in a body bag early and went to sleep. This was kind of weird. Uh, Quentin Johnston, Zay Flowers. Oh, my God. Mark Andrews showers do not bring Zay Flowers. Uh, Roma Dunes, Jalen Naylor, Rashi Rice, uh, Christian Wit- uh, Watson, all the Titans wide receivers, and all the Dolphins wide receivers. And then for the tight ends, oh, my God. We are throwing it back for tight ends. Got more than Kyle Pitts this week. We are so back, baby. Who scored more than Kyle Pitts this week? Uh, AJ Barner, Blake Whitehot, Austin Hooper, Cade Auten, Josh Oliver, Drew Ogletree, Noah Gray, Colby Parkinson. Dalton Schultz, Eric All Day, Darnell Washington, Tyler Conklin, Noah Fantastic. Did you get a little Brenton Strange last night? Will Disley, Cade, don't forget to turn off the stove. Harrison Bryant, Grant Calcatara, Luke Musgrave, Jatavion Sanders. Tanner Connor, Johnny Munt, Brock, Jawan Johnson, Elijah Higgins, Jeremy Rocket, Jordan Akins, John Bates, Hayden Hurst, Theo Johnson, Chico Conquo, Josh, see in a while, Jack Stoll, Dead Pharaoh Brown, did you get a good Drew sample? Or were you Dawson Knox? Nate Adkins and my dead grandmother scored the same amount of points as Kyle Pitts. Kyle Pitts and Mark Andrews, both part of the Goose Club, got you a big old zero points. Elite tight end is dead. Uh, if you chase Cole Komet, he only had three receptions, which hilariously enough was not that bad, honestly. Like six points from tight end these days feels okay. Um, Dalton Schultz, Brock Bowers, that one was the one that felt bad. Felt like he had a – like it was just lined up for him. The opportunity, no Devontae Adams, and it just didn't really work out. Uh, Tyler Conklin, Isaiah Likely, Hunter Henry, uh, and the aforementioned Mark Andrews and Kyle Pitts. And then on defense, uh, if you happen to play the Bills, the Bengals, the Texans, I really thought the Texans would be a good streaming matchup. Didn't work out that way. Uh, The Steelers were doing fine until Joe Flacco came in. And then the Vikings. I had the Vikings also as a streaming defense. I didn't think Love would play. And then when he did uh, start off really badly, that was looking like a great call at first. And then Jordan Love did Jordan Love things. All right, uh, let's get into the waivers, and we'll call it a show. The fuck, the fuck, the fuck is in the air. The fuck, there's white shit everywhere. The fuck, I must be fucking baked, and this shit's probably fake. The fucking hell did I just take the fuck? 
So, I mean, important week of waivers. It is going into week five. Uh, so a lot of make or break uh, uh, teams right now are either going to be one and three and zero oh and four and desperately looking for some waivers and some help. Uh, if you're at the top of the standings, you're going to be looking maybe to re- replace some injuries or just add some depth. Uh, but starting with quarterbacks, my number one guy, obviously, old man Flacco, uh, Joe Flacco. If he plays a game or two, is extremely relevant. This is right back in Andy Dalton territory, where the entire offense will look better with a uh, competent veteran quarterback who can move the ball through the air, as opposed to just relying on his superhuman athletic ability. Um, I have Tyler Huntley on this list exclusively for super flex leagues. As gross as it looked, he did get a lot of rushing work and a rushing touchdown. So if you are really hard up for a quarterback in a super flex league, uh, a deep enough one, he is at least rosterable. Uh, and then Mason Rudolph, we've with all the crazy shit I've seen this year with like Sam Darnold and stuff, I'm willing to take a shot on Mason Rudolph just because if he can make it work with Calvin Ridley and DeAndre Hopkins uh, and Tyler Boyd, like, you know, I think that that can be good, but uh, I'm not exactly, I'm not thrilled about it. But again, that's very deep league super flex. Like I'm talking 14, 16 team super flex at that point. My real guy is just Joe Flacco, target Joe Flacco. Uh, for running backs, uh, unfortunately, Jonathan Taylor dealing with an injury that makes Trey Sermon a priority. Add Kareem Hunt. Uh, now this one, if you need it for two weeks, if you are Owen, uh, Owen four, for example, I would not add Kareem Hunt. If you are four and zero, I would add Kareem Hunt uh, because they are going to be facing New Orleans and then they have the bye week. Uh, plus, Ceh is bound to return, uh, so we'll see if that turns into a little bit more of a gross timeshare. But Kareem Hunt was throwing it back to the old days of when he was with the Chiefs as a rookie, and he was getting most of the work. He was looking okay. Um, someone gave me huge shit last year for having Kareem Hunt as like a last round best ball target. He had nine touchdowns last year with the Browns, by the way. Uh, if he can kind of latch on here and you know be the serviceable replacement until uh, Pacheco is able to return. He's going to have some fantasy value. Uh, Emmanuel Wilson is a stash and hold. Justice Hill, uh, shout out to Big Draft Energy. He's been very much in on the Justice Hill train. I think he was in on it at the expense of Mark Andrews, uh, which, or Mark Andrews at the expense of uh, Derrick Henry, which has not been the case, obviously. Derrick Henry looks like a fucking beast. Uh, but Justice Hill looks like the best wide receiver on that team right now, so he's still worth an ad because he is definitely going to get work. I mean, Derrick Henry is not going to get 100% of the snaps because uh, they're they're wanting to keep him fresh for the playoffs. Uh, and then Tank Bigsby, if um, if he's out there and ETN is really dealing with a shoulder injury, Tank Bigsby is definitely going to be worth an ad. For wide receivers, uh, Christian Watson is injured again, unfortunately. Uh, and with Jordan Love back, that makes Dontavian Wicks a priority ad. Uh, he's going to be available in a lot of your leagues. Um, so he's definitely going to be someone that everybody's going to be saying grab. That's going to be a, a bit of a fab dump. If you are not able to get him, I like guys like Tutu Atwell. Uh, Wandale Robinson is a PPR king. And if Neighbors has to deal with some injuries, uh, Wandale, again, just is going to continue to soak up targets. Uh, so he's great for PPR uh, leagues. Uh, Josh Downs, if, again, Joe Flacco is going to be starting, I like him. Xavier Leggett uh, with uh, Adam Thielen out. Uh, I think he saw, like, 10 targets. I mean, he got he caught six of them. I think he had, like, six for 60 in a tutty. It was a low-key good game. So he's definitely someone I'm going to be targeting very highly, kind of under the radar. Uh, I like Trey Tucker, as long as Devontae Adams is not playing. Uh, Jerry Judy is about to have a matchup with the Commanders. If he's out there, he's maybe worth an ad if you're really hurting at wide receiver, if you're dealing with a lot of injuries, or if you're just in a deeper league. Uh, and then Lad McConkey, if he's out there on waivers again. The, I feel like the longer the season goes, the better Lad McConkey is going to be. Like someone's got to step up for these wide receivers. Um, we saw a couple of Quentin Johnson weeks. We've seen a couple of Lad McConkey weeks. I think Lad McConkey is just the best overall wide receiver for the Chargers. 
Uh, so hopefully that can help him emerge as the season continues, and he would definitely be worth at least holding on your roster and playing in decent matchups. Uh, for tight end, Tucker Craft. I've been on the Tucker Craft train since he was drafted. When they were drafted together, Craft and Musgrave, uh, they profiled like Hayden Hurst and Mark Andrews back in the day, with Kraft fitting more of the Mandrews mold as a true natural wide uh, receiver. Um, so I really like Tucker Craft. He is definitely worth an add. Uh, though that one, I would temper expectations. Feels like you're chasing points a little bit. I actually really like Kate Otten. Last two games, eight and nine targets. He's not doing a ton with them. He's dropping uh, passes, unfortunately. He, If he can get a little bit more consistent, he's going to pop for some good games. But he is at least getting gross low floor right now. Uh, so he's a solid tight end streamer. And same with Colby Parkinson. Like, uh, again, just... If you just need that four for 40, it's, you, there's not, there has not been a true breakout and it may not happen, but he's at least like on the field consistently getting targets. Uh, I think he saw seven targets again, last game uh, caught four of them. I, again, it's like four for 40 kind of thing. So uh, you're looking at gross floor, um, not a lot of ceiling, but that's every tight end. It feels like right now. So these are your tight end streamers. And on defense, uh, I like the Seattle Seahawks against the Giants, especially if neighbors uh, can't play. I like the Raiders uh, at the Broncos, even though the Broncos have looked better. The Raiders' defense um, showed up even without Max Crosby. And, you know, Bo Nix and that offense, still not the greatest. So I would still stream against them. And the Commanders suddenly showing up and uh, against a struggling Browns team that seems like they can't find themselves and the Browns have to go on the road here against the Commanders team that's really feeling themselves that might get up early uh, with Jaden Daniels. I really like this uh, matchup, so I think I might be streaming the Commanders too. That is it for me. Uh, we're dropping a pre-recorded episode. Today we'll be back live on Thursday. Um, I don't know exactly what time. Most likely 7 o'clock uh, to do the uh, weekly matchup start sits um, and some streaming options for you guys. Uh, and then I'll be back on Sunday live uh, at 9 a.m. Uh, to do the last minute uh, question start sit trade, that kind of thing. Uh, unfortunately... The Worst Interview um, is one of my favorite uh, shows that I do on this channel. That one's going to be taking a little bit of a hiatus. Uh, it's just the the scheduling um, has gotten really hectic, especially now that we're in season, not just on the end of the guests who obviously, you know, I'm trying to get uh, fantasy analysts and so they're all crazy busy, but I'm also just crazy busy this year, more so even than I expected um, so I'm kind of struggling to find where I can manage the channel. Cause again, this for me is always a hobby and you know, when it stops being fun, it goes away and I don't want that to happen. And so these are just kind of the things that I do to manage, uh, you know, I guess balancing mental health with the show. Um, I guess it's not a full-time job for me. This is very much like a, a fun hobby that I love to do. And I love doing it for you guys. But um, like I said, like last night I had dinner with the family and I just didn't have, like I had a lot of shit going on. And so I, that's why I had to push this show to today. Plus with the double header, it just made sense, honestly. Um, and then, like I said, with the interview stuff, it's like, those are, they're not going away. Um, but they are going to be fewer and further between, I think. And I'm going to, I'm going to get rid of the weekly thing that's going away. I think that I'm just going to release them as they come from now on where it's like, yeah, there might be a run of, you know, two, three that come out, uh, in a couple weeks and then there might not be one for a month. Um, so I know it sucks cause, uh, I I've tried to be very consistent with that show. Uh, but again, it's just frankly not possible anymore. And I've been doing it for over a year. And the fact that I kept it going for a year, every single week, uh, was a, a very tall task in and of itself. Um, so again, that one is not going away or we're, we're not saying goodbye. We're just saying, see you later. Uh, and I'm still, I still have some, uh, set up to do, uh, in the near future, like shout out to uh, sleazeball, uh, that's still scheduled and everything um, for like week seven, I think. 
Uh, but yeah, just again, balancing life and all its many intricacies, um, just dialing it a little bit back on the interview show, uh, probably until the off season. And then I'll be able to get a bunch more of those hammered in. Um, but yeah, just wanted to give everybody a heads up. I had dropped something uh, loosely on Twitter, but just kind of explaining a little bit more on the back end. Uh, so you may see worst interview, uh, just take a little bit of a step back. But hey, we've been doing it for over a year, guys. That means there's a catalog of over 52 episodes that I would love for you guys to go. Um, they're available on Apple, uh, Spotify, and YouTube. So if you guys really want to help out the show, I would love for you to go watch those uh, episodes. They're all evergreen content. Um, a lot of them are just very silly and you can listen to them even though it's been a year, like they still hold up. Uh, so please go listen to all those old episodes with a lot of the amazing fantasy analysts that I've now had the chance to meet and become friends with since going to the fantasy football expo. Um, so yeah, highly recommend a lot of those old episodes um uh, it's crazy to say old episodes but yeah go check out there's over 50 of them uh leave some ratings and reviews let me know that you watched them and uh we'll bring bring back some new ones uh in the coming months uh but my main focus for the rest of this year basically is going to be worst fantasy show uh until we wrap up into the off season so i just want to give you guys a heads up and say that uh, i appreciate you guys for watching thank you so much uh, make sure you super kick that like and subscribe to help support the show. But until the next time, catch all of you guys on the flip side. He's running down the middle by the 50. He's at the 30. He's bare chested and banging his chest. Now he runs the opposite way. He runs at the 50. He runs at the 40. The guy is drunk, but there he goes. The 20. They're chasing him. They're not going to get him. Waving his arms, bare chested. Somebody stop Look that out, man. Here comes